Thanks so much for giving me this amazing honor. When I look at the past recipients of this award, I am so humbled to be among these true giants of Canadian journalism. I'm also in awe of the journalism that's being honored tonight. I feel really lucky to have been able to do this job for 36 years. I consider myself a local reporter, even though the stories I have covered sometimes have national or international significance. As journalists, we try to look at the root of problems, which inevitably begin in communities, and they're covered by local journalists. That's why it's so tragic that so many local journalists have lost their jobs in recent years. When I was a young reporter starting out, I applied the, well, that's just not right test to the stories I wrote, whether they were big or small. I remember getting called by a young mom who'd been featured in a documentary on the journal about the sex trade. She had told the CBC that she occasionally worked Vancouver streets when her kids needed things like winter coats. Because of her TV appearance, BC welfare officials cut her off, saying she was earning money. Well, that's just not right, I said when she called me. Her story made the front page, and she got her welfare restored. The biggest, well, that's just not right story of my career was, of course, the 1985 Air India bombing, the devastating terrorist attack that claimed 331 lives, was plotted and carried out right here in my community. The night of the bombing, I had the rookie reporter assignment of door knocking at the homes of those who had lost loved ones. I expected the doors to be slammed in my face. Instead, I was welcomed warmly into these homes and surrounded by grief-stricken family members. I will never forget that night. I tried to stay on the Air India story after it faded from the headlines, documenting police inaction and families' frustrations. When I investigated some of the suspects in the fall of 1997, there were immediate repercussions. Both myself and one of my sources, newspaper publisher Tara Singh Hare, began receiving death threats. Within a year, Hare had been assassinated, and now more than 20 years later, those behind his murder have never been prosecuted, even though their identities are widely known. While I never set out to be a crime reporter per se, so many of the well, that's just not right stories are about injustices related to terrible crimes. I was privileged to work with Lori Culbert and Lindsay Kynes to investigate the missing women in Vancouver's downtown east side. This was back in 2001, long before the treatment of these women by predators and police became a national story. After our series, a police task force got additional resources, and four months later, Robert Picton was arrested. In recent years, I've had the challenge of trying to dig deeply into organized crime and the resulting gang and gun violence that has left hundreds of people dead in my community. The more stories I did, the more those involved decided I was a problem. They tried to intimidate and threaten not only me, but also the people who provide information to me. That has just motiv motivated me to keep on reporting. I'm able to do so with the support of my amazing newsroom colleagues. I feel like they always have my back, and I couldn't do this job without them. I learned that it was a former colleague, global investigative reporter Stuart Bell, who nominated me. Stu has done brave and challenging work covering extremism in Canada and abroad. I want to thank him for putting my name forward. So again, thanks for this award. I so appreciate your support, and we will hopefully all get to meet again when this pandemic is over.